several hours after the detonation of an atomic cannon round fired six miles into the desert at the Nevada test site on May 23, 1953, a St. George housewife, pregnant with child, gazes out her kitchen window. Transfixed by a towering cloud advancing from the west, she puts her dishes down and steps outside to gain a better view. As the dust settled, children write their names across a car window covered with the fine dust that will burn their fingertips seconds later. To ease the sting, they quickly lick their fingers clean. Hi, I'm Bill Berry, and welcome to my desert adventures. Look what we found while driving out to the Colorado River from our home in the Fortuna foothills just outside of Yuma, Arizona. This is one of 20 atomic cannons built in the 1950s as part of our nuclear arms race. This powerful piece of military history is a fascinating reminder of the Cold War era and the tragic results of testing above ground nuclear explosions during that time. This massive 280 millimeter gun was designed to fire nuclear shells, making it a significant advancement in military technology. The cannon is 84 feet long and weighs a staggering 83 tons, requiring two specially designed tractors to transport it. It can easily be transported onto the battlefield and requires less than an hour for setup. The first and only test of the atomic cannon took place on May 25, 1953 at the Nevada test site some 65 miles northwest of Las Vegas. The test site, now known as the Nevada National Security Site, covers an area of approximately 1,360 square miles and was established in 1951 for testing of nuclear devices. The first and only test of the cannon itself, known as Shot Grable, was conducted there on May 25th. The test was part of Operation Upshot Knothole. The cannon fired a 280 millimeter shell with a nuclear warhead and traveled seven miles before detonating. The explosion had a yield of 15 kilotons, similar to the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. A total of 11 above ground tests were conducted from March of 1953 to June of that year. 10 above ground tests from towers were also done in order to test the nuclear shell. A miscalculation on a tower test called Harry which occurred on May 19, 1953, resulted in the distribution of a huge amount of radioactive particles into the atmosphere. This test would later be called Dirty Harry. The results of these explosions were both awe-inspiring and terrifying. The mushroom cloud rose to over 11,000 feet and the shock wave could be felt miles away. The test demonstrated the devastating power of nuclear artillery and its potential to change the course of warfare. It also highlighted the blatant disregard for the safety of citizens of the United States. Check out this excerpt from a 24-minute video done by the Atomic Energy Commission. I'll let you decide. Actually, when the invisible cloud had passed, the total amount of radiation deposited on St. George was far from hazardous. Then you may ask, why were the people asked to stay indoors? For a very simple reason. The Atomic Energy Commission doesn't take chances on safety. For 11 years, beginning in January of 1951, the United States government conducted 100 atmospheric atomic weaponry tests Atmospheric testing occurring between 1951 to 1958 at the Nevada test site likely contributed to over 186,000 crude deaths and 63,500 cancer deaths in the 20-year window after testing began. Hotspots occurred all across the country. 
and my wife Kathy was one year old when the Grable shot occurred using the atomic cannon. I wonder if her thyroid condition has anything to do with that. Today, the Yuma Proving Ground serves as a reminder of this pivotal moment in history. Visiting the atomic cannon, I was struck by the sheer scale of the weapon and the sobering reality of its potential use. It's a powerful reminder of the destructive capabilities of nuclear weapons and the importance of striving for peace and disarmament. Join me next time as we explore our southwestern deserts.